the squad back in the news once again and surprisingly this time it's warner brothers that's bringing up the squad rocksteady was reportedly the decision makers behind making suicide squad a live service game as always links are going to be in the description down below and while you're down there be sure to hit that subscribe button because we're trying to hit 200 subs before the end of the month rocksteady surprises fan by making the squad a live service title leading to mixed reviews on launch obviously because they are a studio that mostly known for the arkham series which was a fantastic franchise so to have them switch from single player story focus to live service was honestly just completely baffling and completely unexpected but that's what they wanted to go with and hopefully this article will be explaining the reasoning why. However, fans blaming Warner Brothers for the game's directional shift is unfair, as Rocksteady leadership apparently made the call. Interesting use of language, them saying apparently they made the call, but let's keep reading. Ultimately, the live service approach can be viewed as a contributing factor to the game's poor performance as it is not the direction many fans wanted to see the Arkhamverse go in. No, it was definitely not the direction fans wanted to see the Arkhamverse go into. And it is a major factor into why the game did uh, so poorly. Not the only factor, but definitely a major factor. The squad surprises many when Warner Brothers Gaming Division revealed it to be a live service title, though developers Rocksteady Studios was reportedly never required to make it one. The studio is most known for the strictly single player Batman and Arkham games, which made a sudden shift in genre all the more puzzling for longtime fans especially after finding out it was never forced onto them in the first place. I know we're not done with the article, but so far all they've done is keep saying that it was not Warner Brothers' decision, that it was Rocksteady's decision, which is completely possible. I'm just having a hard time understanding why, and this article has offered, uh, as of right now, no explanations as to why they chose to go live service, and I also find it very odd. I think that the timing of this article is quite odd, um, they had months to say say anything, Warner Brothers, and they, they chose they chose to stay quiet. And then they officially came out and said that Suicide Squad was a um, a failure. That they, they were gonna that there won't be any continuation. That the game is pretty much a big flop. And then once they publicly announced that the squad is a failure, then they're like, oh, actually, fun fact we had nothing to do with the decision making. So I just think that the timing between both is quite weird. And also, if it was Rocksteady's decision to make it a live service game, uh, why did the leadership just leave uh, midway through the development of the game to start their own company? So like, could it have been their decision? 100%. Could it have been the best decision out of all the options they had to choose? That's also something we don't know. The live service model was the source of many of the squad's fans' complaints about the game when it was revealed and during its closed alpha period, leading to a middle to low review score on launch. Players noted during the alpha test period that the moment to moment action was fun sometimes, but the game overall was marred by a ton of grinding required to unlock many of its unique items or cosmetics. AAA studios need to understand, need to understand really quick. If I'm paying full price for a game, you cannot make me grind like in a mobile game. That is wild. I, I paid full price. I gave you the $70 or in Canada, the $100. And then you're going to make me grind to get like a special item or special cosmetic. That's insane. I am spending the money. Give me my things because I've paid for them. Do not make me grind over $100 to get those items, especially if they're just cosmetic. While many blame Warner Brothers for the sudden shift in direction for the Arkhamverse, a recent earning call from the publisher confirms that leadership at Rocksteady were the ones who ultimately made the call to turn the squad into a live service game. The reporter, which comes from WB Discovery CEO David Zalav, Zal Zal sorry about that, and was reported on by Jason Schreier, seems to confirm that the publisher gave Rocksteady some degree of choice in the matter and rocksteady bosses gravitated towards the live service angle themselves there you have it folks they had some degree of choice which again i have absolutely zero proof backing this up this is just my opinion the live service model could have been the best option that was given to that table i'm not saying it is i'm not saying that's what happened i'm saying that it's a possibility that maybe they were like, hey, 
if you guys want to keep uh, afloat and stay under the, the Warner Brothers um, big bills, then you're going to have to make a game that maybe outsells Hogwarts Legacy, that makes more money than Hogwarts Legacy. And a great way to make a game that's going to have the potential to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars is by making a live service. However, you have to also make sure the game is good. Warner Brothers is apparently not to blame for the squad's controversial approach. On Warner Brothers Discovery earning calls this morning, CEO David Zalsa said that their quarter's financial took a hit due to the disappointing release of the squad's newest game from Rocksteady. Well, yeah, the game was garbage. The game was terrible. Of course, you guys are going to take a financial hit. While it is unclear who specifically at Rocksteady made such decisions, co-founder Sefton Hill and Jamie Walker left the studio in 2022, shortly after the game entered full development, which has led to some speculation regarding their roles in it. Since they were the main heads of the studio when the game began to develop, some believe they were aware that the direction would be unpopular and left to avoid public backlash, though this is purely speculation. That's also very true, right? The head developers of Rocksteady Studios might have seen an opportunity to make a huge amount of money with uh, the squad, thought that it was going to be an instant not an instant, instant success, but probably thought that they could piggyback off of their previous franchises. And then after the reception of Suicide Squad was incredibly poor, they could have also just like, hey, you know what? Let's jump ship. And by jumping ship, throughout the project and having Warner Brothers as a parent company, it, people are going to just automatically shift the blame to Warner Brothers because most of the time that's what we do, right? We don't, we don't blame the developers, we blame the pu publishers. So uh, it, it would be an excellent plan to avoid any backlash for them to just leave midway through the project. Yeah, hundred percent. This is also a very, very real possibility. Despite being set within the Arkhamverse universe, the always online looter shooter approach with a battle pass system failed to impress fans of those games, especially since it was the first full fledged Arkhamverse title since 2015. Arkham Knight's Zalav allegedly referred to the disappointing release of the squad in the same earning call, citing how the game has not performed on the level the company was expecting. Well, coming off the heels of Hogwarts Legacy, I don't think any game could have filled those shoes to be completely honest, but having the game be a live service, having the game focus on the squad versus it focusing on the league members, the unceremonious uh, deaths of the league members, all of these things are definitely going to factor in whether the game is good or not. And unfortunately for Warner Brothers and Rocksteady, the game is trash. The controversies surrounding the game did not stop there either as fans also took issues with the game's treatment of Batman and what we assume at the time to be the late Kevin Conroy's final vocal performance as the character. Without sales numbers and budget information, it is unclear just how much of a Lost Wonder Brothers discovery suffered from the game's lackluster performance, though Zalav comments confirms the profit hit was significant. Here you guys have it folks, it is uh, officially not the fault of Warner Brothers and we should simply just blame Rocksteady. Take that with a grain of salt. We have a couple of possibilities here. It could be 100% that Warner Brothers is like, hey, you can do whatever you want and Rocksteady chose a live service. I am not super convinced on that. I think that there might have been a couple of options on the table and perhaps at the time the live service option seemed the best but that's gonna be it for today's video let me know what you think in the comment section down below do you think that last the squad could have survived if it wasn't a live service game let me know while you're down there and while you're there be sure to hit that like share favorite and subscribe because we're trying to hit 300 subs before the end of the month and we are so close and if you don't want to help me well remember at the end of the day i'm just some guy on the internet and i'll see you guys next time Peace. If you want to see more of my face, I'm sure you click on the video you see on screen right now. Peace.